What's up guys, hope you are having a great day and in this episode I want to go over the basics of PDO. So what is PDO? PDO stands for PHP Data Objects, which is a lightweight consistent interface for accessing databases in PHP. It provides a database access abstraction layer, so regardless of which database you're using, you will be using the same functions to issue queries and fetch data. There are two ways how you could access a database. The first one is MySQLY, which you've probably heard from before, and you've got PDO. Unlike MySQL, PDO has 12 different driver supports such as Kerbert, Firebird, IBM, while MySQLI only has one, which is MySQL. PDO uses an object-oriented programming API, while MySQLI uses both object-oriented programming and procedural. And what I mean with this is that you can only use PDO with object-oriented programming. PDO also has named params and MySQLI does not. And obviously, I've been focusing a lot on object-oriented programming in the last couple of episodes. So therefore, I think it's pretty important for you to learn how to work with PDO. So what are the benefits of using PDO? In my opinion, the best thing about PDO is the exception mode because you are to use exceptions for error handling. To produce an exception, PDO can be forced into a relevant error mode attribute. Another cool feature that PDO has is that it can auto detect variable types. So everything will be sent back to the server as a string and then it will be converted to the right data type in the database. Both PDO and MySQL provide support for prepared statements, but the way PDO works is that it will send separately the instructions, so basically the insert into or update and so on, and the data will be sent separately as well. What I want to do right now is to go to the code editor and connect to the database using PDO. The first thing that I want to do in my folder is to create a new folder called includes. And inside the includes folder, I want two new files. The first one is called convic.php. And the second file, so let's create another one, is called database.php. Now we also have our index.php, which is in the root folder. And what I want to do right here is to create PHP opening and closing tags. And I want to require underscore once the file of our database. So let's say includes forward slash database.php. Let's save it. Let's go back to the browser and refresh it. And we're not getting an error message right now. And that's what we want. Now, what I like to do is to create constants in the convict file and assign them to the properties inside the database file for our connection. If you don't want to do this, you basically need to set the property values inside the database.php file which we will create in a second, equal to the value that I am setting equal to the constants. So let's go to our convict.php file and let's create an opening PHP tag because we're working in a file where we will only use PHP so we don't need our closing tag. Let me add a comment because we will create database parameters. I want to use the define method for creating our parameters. The first one, has a name of db underscore host. After the single quotes, I want to add a comma and I want to go to the local host, which is equal to our host. Let's copy paste it three more times. The second one is db underscore user, which is equal to a value of root. We have our db underscore pass for our password which is empty, but if you do have a password set in your database, please enter it right here. The last one that we have is our db underscore name, which I will set equal to pdo underscore db, which I haven't created yet, but I will do that later on. For now, we're done in our convict file, so let's save it and let's go to the database.php file. What I want to do right here is to create an opening PHP tag, and then on the line below, I want to create a class since we're working with object-oriented programming. So let's say class space capital D of database. What I want to do here is to create four properties. So let's create the first one of private variable db host. 
which is equal to the constant that we just created in capitals db underscore host. On the line below, I want to do the same thing for the user. So db user is equal to db underscore user. I have another one for the password. So private db pass is equal to db underscore pass. And the last one is the private database name, which is equal to db underscore name. I want to add two more properties which do not have a value. So let's create a private db handler. And I want another one for the error message. So let's say private error. What I want to do below my properties is to create a private function called connect, where we will establish our database connection. If you have worked with MySQL I before, you know that you have four properties to connect to the database. With PDO, it's a little bit different because you only have three. So let's create a variable inside our public function connect called con, and let's set it equal to single quotes. Inside the single quotes, we want to create a string and we want to add a couple of our properties to it. The first thing inside single quotes is the type of driver that we are using. I know for myself that I'm using my SQL, but it could be different for you. So in order to check this, we can go to the index.php right below our includes. We can create another set of PHP tags. And what we basically could do is to print underscore R. So we want to print an array of PDO in capitals, double colon. And we want to use camel case for get available drivers. And this is a PDO built-in function. So we need to add parentheses. It's drivers, excuse me. Let's save it. Let's refresh the browser. And you can see all the available PDO drivers that can be used on the screen right now. Let me zoom in. So on the right, you have SQLite, PGSQL, which is a procedural programming language supported by PostgreSQL. And the one that we want to use is MySQL. So let's go back to our database.php file. And inside single quotes, let's add MySQL colon host is equal to outside of our single quotes, we want to concatenate from this db host. We want to concatenate one more time because we also need to include the database name. So in single quotes again, let's add a semicolon followed by db name and we need to set it equal and we need to concatenate again from this db name. Right below our connection, I want to create a new variable called options and I want to set it equal to an array. So let's go inside the array. And what we want to do right here is to create an associative array where we will basically do two checks. Since PDO lets us open the connection as a persistent connection, which basically means that rather establishing a new connection with each request, the connection to the database is cached and reused. So what we want to do is to establish a persistent connection. And the way we do this is by saying PDO in capitals, followed by two columns, ATTR underscore persistent, all in capitals, and we want to assign it to true. So we're basically enabling a persistent connection. After the true, let's add a comma, I already had it. We want to enable the PDO error mode. And this can be done by saying PDO double colon again, ATTR underscore error mode of error mode. And we need to assign it to a PDO method called PDO again, double colon, ERR mode underscore exception. And what this does is basically throwing exceptions inside the exception mode. So if there is an error, the script will basically stop running. What I want to do outside of my array is to create a try catch. So let's say try, and after the try, let's create a catch, set of parentheses and another set of curly braces. And inside the try, we basically want to instantiate the PDO class and passing in the connection, user, password, and the options. And what I want to assign it to is to this pointer DB handler is equal to a new PDO. And we want to pass in the connection, so variable con, we want to pass in this db user. 
we want to pass in this db password and we want to pass in the options that we have this will always be tried whatever is in the try but we also want to do something if it doesn't work first off inside the parentheses we want to set our exception so let's say pdo exception variable e inside the catch we want to set our error message that we created as a property so this error equal to variable e which is a message of pdo and we want to print out get message which is a built-in function of pdo and after the error we also need to echo out the error message so let's say echo this error save it now let's go to our index.php file and let's create opening and closing php tags and what we want to do right here is to instantiate the class of our database by creating a new variable called object and to set it equal to a new database. And what we want to do is to echo out the object variable, but we want to echo out the connect method that we created. So let's save it. Let's go back to the browser and let's refresh it. Now you can see that we're getting an error message because our connection method is private. And that's what we want because we don't want anyone to access our connection. So let's go back to the database.php file and let's change private to public. Save it, refresh the browser and something went wrong right here because if we go back to our index.php, we haven't included our convict.php file. So let's do that. Let's copy paste it and let's change the first one to convict.php because be aware, you first want to require your constants and then you want to use it in the database.php. And if we require our database.php file first, the constants do not exist. So let's save it, refresh the browser, and you can see an error message from the get message that we created in our try catch because the pdo underscore db does not exist. If we open a new tab and go to localhost forward slash php my admin, let me zoom out a little bit. Let's create a new database called video underscore db. Let's create it. Let's go back to our localhost browser again. Let's refresh it. And the error message has been disappeared because our database does exist right now. This was it for this video where we connected to our database using PDO. And in the next episode, I want to introduce you to a design pattern called MVC. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.